Welcome back to our ongoing series of video lessons for creating an RPG game for CPI 111. When we wrapped up the last lesson, we had uh, created a system through which we can make hit boxes that uh, appear when our player swings the sword and point in the right direction. But it doesn't actually do anything. So let's uh, allow our player to cause some damage uh, to some of the plants and other things in the room. Now there's a simple way, and then of course there's a somewhat more difficult way. So <laughs> let's start with the simple way. Uh, I'm here on our grass object, and if I want to do a simple way of allowing our player to destroy um, the grass. So I could just simply come in here and do a collision and do a collision with the hitbox and then in the collision with the hitbox I could just say instance destroy and come back out and that should work. We should be able to then slight, uh, slice our plants Let's come over here and come up here and ha-ha, there we go. We can destroy our plants just as easy as that. That's the easy way, but of course we can't make things that easy. We want to make a more sophisticated system for taking care of uh, slicing and attacking various things. And you may ask, why? what's the point of creating this more complex system? Well, <laughs> we don't have to. We could just make it easy. No. Uh, the reason we're doing it is that we're, it, by creating a somewhat more complicated, but not unbelievably complicated system uh, that we can use in conjunction with our hitbox and collisions, it will allow you, the developer, as you create a more complex version of an RPG game, to keep track of which objects are able to be hit by the hitbox, which ones aren't able to be hit, and to be able to turn on and off the ability to be hit at various times and under various conditions in the game. So for example, you might decide at some point in the game that um, the plants are invincible and they can't be hit or destroyed by the sword. Or there may be objects in the world that you don't want to have be able to be hit. So let's set up a system that is initially a little bit more complicated but ultimately uh, will make life a little bit simpler. And to do this we're going to use some scripts that I have created and uploaded for you on the Blackboard site. Depending on when you are viewing this video, depending on when you're viewing the video, uh, the scripts may be in a different location. So at the time I'm recording this, the scripts are inside weeks 9 to 11, RPG game. Uh, check with me when you're taking the class to make sure where you can find these, and I'll announce it in class as well. All right, and uh, under the lectures, RPG games, in addition to the videos that I'm uploading, here's a, a section called scripts. And inside this collection of scripts, I've got something called create hitbox and something called hurt box object can be hit and something else called is target. So we're going to make use of all of these plus a couple of other scripts. Staying here on the grass, we're going to go to the create event and we're going to call a custom script from this create event that's not on the Blackboard site uh, because it's such a easy one. I figured we could just uh, we could just do it without having to to worry about it. Oh look, I've got create hitbox already there. Oh, you may be lucky and already have it ready for you. Okay. All right, but the simple one that we're going to create here for the grass. Let's go ahead and do resources and create script, and this is going to be called setup underscore hurt box underscore object. That'll be the name of our script. 
And what is going to occur inside this script? The most ludicrous thing ever. It's going to be a single line script, which is going to say invincible equals false. So I mentioned you might want to create moments in your game when the player is not able to destroy some object, um, in our case, for example, grass. And uh, But by default, we're going to say that objects are not invincible, meaning that they can be hurt or hit. Okay. That's the only line we need in that one. Let's make sure to name it appropriately. Set up. Hurt box underscore object. Okay, that's the name of our script. And then here on the grass in the create event, I will say set up hurt box object. Don't have to pass anything to it. All it's doing basically behind the scenes is setting an instance variable named invincible to false. Staying here on the grass, let's go back to our collision between the grass and the hitbox. And we're going to add in an if statement. And the if statement is going to check if the object is something which can be hit, this grass. Okay? And to do that check, we will use this built-in script that you can download from the Blackboard site. For the sake of our video here, I'll go ahead and create it, because it's not a very long script. It's going to be called hurt box object can be hit. Is that right? Yep, that's right. OK. And there's not much going on in here either. I'm going to have a local variable in here called underscore hitbox. And I'm going to pass that in through argument 0. I'm going to have another local variable called isTarget. And I'm going to set that to another custom function called isTarget, which we don't have in here yet. We will in a minute. This is another one that's up on the Blackboard site that you can download and make use of to save yourself a little time, but I'm going to do it live here so you can understand what it is I'm trying to do. OK, and then I'm going to return not invincible and is target. That's going to take some explanation, so hold on and I'll explain all this. But before I explain it, we need to create uh, this is target script as well. And we need to name this guy. Okay, so I'll copy that. Save that out. Come over here. Rename that one to hurt box object can be hit. And let's create another new script. This one is going to be called is target. And what are we going to do inside is target? Well, move this down a little bit here. We're going to have a couple of arguments in here. First one is going to be we'll call value. And second argument is going to be called target array. All right. Then we're going to create some local variables. One is going to be called value. And we're going to store in this local variable whatever gets passed into argument 0, which is going to be value. So see, we're passing in something value, calling it value locally. Same idea here. We're going to create another local variable called array. And we're going to set that to, or we're going to store in that whatever I get passed into argument one, which is going to be a reference to an array. And we're going to have another local variable called array length, 
Grr, if I can spell it correctly. Array length th equals array. Oh, I'm giving you all kinds of new things here. Length 1D underscore array. Let me type this in and I'll explain what's going on in here. So in this function, basically what we want to do is we're going to check to see if this thing is that um, we're checking is an allowable target for a collision or not. And you may remember way back in an earlier lesson when we created a hitbox, one of the things that we did in creating the hitbox was to pass information about which objects were able to be hit. Remember that? We had uh, grass, I think we put in, and I think we put in enemy maybe, although we don't have an enemy yet. And so this is going to basically check that array to see what's in it and to see if the current thing that we're trying to hit, grass, is part of that list of possible things to be hit. Oof. So in calling this thing, we're going to, uh, what? We're going to look for a specific item inside the array that lives on the hitbox that we created. And to do that, we're going to use a built-in function called array length 1D, which is going to return how many slots exist in the array that we pass it. So in our hitbox creation code, we passed in, well, gosh, it'd be nice to remember this, actually. Let's go back to our player here. And let's take a look. We just passed one thing. Okay? We passed in one thing that's able to be hit, which is just the grass. So in this is target function, we're going to get the length of that array, which is one, and then we're going to walk through the <laughs> array, which is only one slot for now, and then check to see if the grass is within that array, which of course it will be. Okay. All right, so here's how we're going to do that. Say var underscore index equals zero. We're going to use that to count through our array. We're going to say repeat. How many times are we going to repeat it? Well, we're going to repeat it, this loop, as many times as we need to to walk through the array. And since our array consists of only one item, it means we're only going to do this once, even though we're using a repeat. But you can imagine that you might have, and you probably will have, a much longer array with lots of things that are able to be hit with the hitbox, and it's going to walk through each of those looking for a specific item. And if it finds it, it'll return true. If it doesn't find it, it will return false. So we're going to check. Is that specific thing there is value, the thing that gets passed in to check, equals array, whichever array we just passed in here, index. Where are we checking within the array? Well, we're starting at 0 and walking up as many as we need to. In our case, we're just going to only do 0. Return. True. What does that mean? We want, we're going to pass in a value, in this case, O grass, for the specific call of this script. And we're going to pass in the name of an array, and we're going to look into that array to see if O grass is a member of that array. And if it is, we'll say we'll return true, meaning this thing is uh, hitable. Okay. All right. If, then we're going to do something a little more challenging here. If object is ancestor, oh good lord, value array underscore index. Do, 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 do. Return true. What in the world does that mean? So, in this first check, if value is equal to whatever's stored in that position in the array, then return true. So if O grass is in the first position, position zero, return true. That's pretty, that, that's not too bad. But this second one's a little confusing. Object is ancestor. 
Imagine that we want to create a parent enemy in our game, and we want to check when the player slashes their sword at any enemy if that enemy is able to be hit. Well, one approach would be to uh, check each individual enemy. Another approach is to check just the parent enemy, if that makes sense. So what by doing this object is ancestor, we can check to see if, uh, in this case, the grass is the child of some other thing. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Uh, we don't need this for the grass, but there are other cases where if we want to check if something is the child of some other object, then we would use this. So this is just to help us out in cases where we have parent and child objects. Okay. Last but not least, we need to increment our position in the array, which we can do by saying index plus plus. Remember we started at zero, plus plus is just gonna add one to it. Okay. What happens if we go all the way through an array and we never return true? As soon as we return true, we exit out of this whole thing. Let's say we don't exit out and we make it all the way to the end of the array through this repeat. Well, that means we didn't find it, so in that case, we need to return false. Okay. That's what all that does. All right, I'll save that, and I need to rename it. Is target. Okay. Wow, that was a lot of work. So things were so simple here. But what we now have is a system through which we can check to see if we are able currently to destroy the grass or not, because as I said, you might want to set up a game where sometimes you can't. So we'll go back into this collision event, and we will say if hurt box object can be hit other the thing we just ran into meaning the grass then destroy it otherwise we, we won't destroy it okay. well we'll see if I have missed something let's give it a test here it's possible we've got all kinds of scripts now that we're calling into action here here is our little guy Oh, good. See, I can destroy the grass still. So functionally, it works just the same way, but we've set it up so that if we would like to change it later, we can. Well, there's one last thing we want to do in this section of the lesson before we move on to creating enemies so we finally have something real to go after. And that is, on our hitbox, when we were setting all this up, we had it set to visible. But in the actual gameplay, you don't want this thing to be visible. You want to just be able to swing your sword without having that big old blob show up out in the room. Uh, unless that's something you want to have. So if I come out here now, I can just swing my sword and you'll see it destroys these guys. Just like that. And as long as we're here, let me demonstrate one other idea. If I go to, do, 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 let's open up our grass again, and let's open up our tree again. Here, our tree. You can see in our tree we've got the depth set, but we're not doing any of the other stuff in here. Let's go ahead and set this up too, like so. And we'll steal the stuff off of the collision. We'll create a collision here with the hitbox. We'll do that same check. Now with this, it should not destroy the tree, right? Right? Or should it? Well, we set invincible to be false, which gives the implication that it's not invincible, meaning it can be destroyed. But there's something else missing, right? What is missing? Why can't we destroy that? What do you think is missing in here? Well, 
Let's go back into our player and into our attack state and into this list. Let's add in O tree that list. Save. Come out. Try this again. Now we can cruise along. Come up here to our tree. Do, 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 do. Take that. And now our tree is destroyed. So just like that, we have added the tree to our list of things that can be destroyed. Now in a real game. You might decide you want you don't want the tree to be destroyed quite so easily, right? So you may need to come in and modify some of the stuff that's going on here um, in order to, to make that possible. Like we may initially, uh, instead of just saying invincible equals false, we might want to set invincible equals true, and then in our collision we might increment some hit points or something here, and only after the hit points have hit a certain number, we destroy the object, and we may want to set it up differently inside our player. But this gives you the idea that you could now continue to add other things to that list of things that are possible to be hit. Excellent. Let's stop here, and then we will continue on with creating an enemy.